present its sixth report and uh, it's uh, the president of the coalition will uh, lead uh, the panel today mr zoller and uh, mr zoller i will give you the floor right away and thank you to you all thank you mr zoller the floor is yours so mr Ricci, uh, thank you very much for this welcome and welcome to all of you this is the sixth report of the coalition it is called icp international coalition on papua it's composed of 17 member organizations from germany holland the uk switzerland australia and it works in partnership with more than 50 organizations in Indonesia and in Papua. We are grateful to uh, the Swiss Press Club for this opportunity to present the report a few weeks uh, before the session of the Human Rights Council. The situation in Papua is serious. Each time we take the floor, produce a report, we have to see that the situation aggravated. And we hope that with this report, we can contribute uh, to more awareness and also to concrete steps to alleviate the fate of the people. In this uh, press conference this morning, we are going to present the report and to present the current situation in West Papua. The report, unfortunately, has not arrived from the printer in Germany, uh, the storm, so we made photocopies we have a press officer today, Thomas. Can you raise your hand? Yes. And the first copies we have will go to the press people present, and the other copies will be distributed. We have about 20 copies available, and we are sure that it will arrive today or tomorrow. <laughs> so please order. There will be a form circulating to order uh, the report it will be uh, brought to your office in the coming days. The topic today will be first the presentation of the report, uh, second the presentation of Papua with followed by question and answers from uh, the participants, in particular from uh, the journalist. Uh, Mr. Ricci is, as the president of the Swiss Press Club, nice enough uh, to lead this part of our discussion. And at the end, we will have uh, some uh, shorter calls to conclude uh, this press meeting. The speakers are a, a good friend of us, uh, Mr. Budi Tadiono, who is uh, the Asia officer, Asia Pacific officer in Franciscans International. Mr. Peter Proof, who is the director of the Commission of the Churches Commission on International Affairs at the World Council of Churches. Mr. Theo Essegem, who is the director and possibly also the founder, I guess, of a main organization inside Papua. And he came uh, for this meeting. Uh, so we are really grateful to you to have come. And the organization is called IKKMP. Uh, it is based in Vamena, Vamena in Papua. And uh, Mark Doris uh, has been uh, the chair of the Papua Solidarity Group in Ireland for many years. And he joined us and he will be uh, 
making some concluding remarks as an external uh, participant in this effort and uh, because he was not contributing directly to the uh, report. Now, on the report itself, the coalition composed of 17 organizations has cooperated with its secretariat with more than 20 organizations who have submitted uh, their draft for concrete specific chapters in order to cover all the different facets of human rights problems currently occurring in Papua. The coalition, it has been a work of more than one year, and the report covers the period of January 2017 to December 2018 with all the statistics. In the last part of last year, we have added the chapters to update this information uh, concerning the events occurring in Papua in 2019. So it is a two years report, 2017-2018, plus the update information without the statistics always uh, concerning the events which occurred since the beginning of 2019. In the meantime, in all this period, the International Coalition, whose secretariat is based in Wuppertal, in Germany, the coalition had two main consultations, international meetings with experts. Uh, the first one took place three years ago in Geneva, and the second one was last year in Berlin. And through this expert consultation, we have already uh, checked and discussed most of the substance of the report. The coalition is disturbed by the escalating violence in West Papua after we obtained from the UN experts, special rapporteurs, treaty bodies, regular warning and calls to the Indonesian authorities. The report itself, it covers not only the human rights issues, but also the conflict and the development policies. Ongoing security force operations in the Papuan Islands in 2019 and the outbreak of racial violence in response to assaults against Papuan students after August 2019 have caused a very deep crisis. This is a new element compared to our 2017 report. Stigmatization and racial discrimination against ethnic Papuans in many areas of public life continue to have profound impacts, in particular on the vulnerable groups in and indigenous communities, in, and also in particular on women. Turning a blind eye on the growing racial tensions and escalation of armed conflicts in West Papua, the Indonesian government apparently still represents the views that the problem in West Papua is of a pure economic nature. This is not true. Maybe for a more detailed presentation of some aspects of the report, I would give the floor to my colleague, uh, 
Budi Tagiono from Franciscans International. Budi. I will speak from the podium. Thank you very much. I'm Budi Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Adrian. I'm Budi Chahyono, and I'm representing uh, Franciscan International. As Adrian has uh, rightly explained, that this report has been the result of uh, research, uh, first-hand information coming from at least 40 organizations, both inside Papua, outside Indonesia, as well as Indonesian NGOs. So it is a result of a vast collaborations. We do not claim that this report is really covering all human rights violations that is taking place in Papua, but most of the human rights violations reported here are, ha have been verified in uh, West Papua. And uh, once again, when we speak about West Papua in this context, it is referring to the two provinces two most eastern provinces of Indonesia, namely the province of West Papua and the province of Papua. But for the generic term, we use the word uh, West Papua. So the report, as Adrian mentioned, it's covering both sides, the sides of the civilian political rights as well as economic cultural uh, rights. Uh, from the report, what we found, in fact, is that in terms of civil and political rights, the statistic has shown that there is no significant improvement. I will come up with some more detailed statistics uh, later. And we also uh, found that the human rights defenders, they are facing some cases of violations of human rights and the situations in which they are working becoming more and more restrictive. So we are lucky to have Theo Hasegem, who is West Papuan, who will share later about what he is doing uh, in defending the human rights of the West Papuan. And in terms of killing, more than half of the killings are a result of torture. And then there is also the tendency from the perspective of freedom of press is that more government organized media are spreading the different fact that we call as alternative facts, which often are different from the facts presented by the journalist, uh, either from the Indonesian journalist or from the West Papuan journalist. Regarding the, uh, uh, the health issues, we are very regretful in fact, that between 2017 2018, we still have 236 death cases due to the epidemic outbreaks. That is due to the malnutrition. So it repeated again from the previous case that happened a few years before. And from the edu education perspective, we found that the literacy rate in West Papua is uh, still low, remains low in comparison with other provinces in Indonesia. Now we come to the numbers. So these are the pictures of cases and victims of human rights violations in West Papua from 2012 to 2018. So the report is covering 2012, 2018, and then we also have the updates on the situations in 2019 and early 2020. So uh, as you can see that we are trying as much as possible to uh, document the human rights violations. And you can see that the tendency of the uh, cases and victims have not improved. I will come to a bit more uh, detail now. So I will highlight here on key cases. If you look at the numbers of uh, cases of extrajudicial killings, uh, we see that in 2017 and 2018, the numbers increased 
in comparison with the previous years. So it's to, uh, to show that the situation of extrajudicial killings done by the Indonesian security forces did not improve. While number of the uh, reported victims of extrajudicial killings have also shown that uh, in the last two years of 2017 and 2018, the situation was worse than in 2016. Although in 2015, this, uh, the cases were also quite uh, high. And then regarding about the sanctions against the perpetrators by the police and military, it is also interesting that in uh, between 2015 to 2017, there were significant improvements in which perpetrators uh, were sanctioned or investigated by the Indonesian uh, uh, police and military. However, in 2018, there was no uh, investigations or sanctions against the Indone members of the Indonesian security uh, forces who uh, committed uh, human rights violations against the West Papuan. So this is also uh, a bit worrying for us because of the cases of impunity of the, security, the members of the security uh, forces. Now, regarding the cases of uh, torture, we also received the report that there is a uh, improvement in terms of number uh, from 2017 to 2018, but 2017 and 2018 remains much higher, having much higher cases of torture than uh, 2015 and 2016. And also regarding the number of uh, reported cases or reported uh, victims of torture, uh, the number in 2017 was much higher than the previous uh, year. And then in 2018, uh, it is reported uh, of 55 uh, cases. Uh, regarding human rights defenders, as, as uh, I said in the beginning, that uh, the situation of the human rights defenders have not improved significantly in West Papua, in which we uh, re uh, documented some cases. Uh, as you can see, the cases in 2017 was quite high up to 10 cases, 10 reported cases. So we cannot say that uh, we cover all the cases, but this is the reported cases in which we could document or we receive the report. While in 2018, uh, we had uh, six cases. And then for 2019, we are still now documenting and we will come up uh, later with the exact number. So if you look at all this uh, statistic, you can see that Overall, we cannot conclude that the situation of human rights in Papua has improved in the last two years. It is really worrying for us because uh, we believe that uh, the, situa the situation in West Papua is, uh, has received the attention of the interna international community as well as uh, from Indonesia, but it is not reflected in terms of how the government could, as they had promised in the beginning of the first year, uh, the first uh, mandate of President Jokowi, and also in the second mandate, as shown by the statistic of the violations that we can see here. So we can have discussion uh, later on why it happens. And then regarding the case of health, I think it is very worrying that there is a, a repeat of uh, the case of malnutrition in the Highland, in Duka, to be very exact in which in 2017 and 2018, we received the report of at least 236 cases of death and mostly uh, minors and women. And I think if you uh, look at the reports of the special reporter on uh, right to health, he uh, provided a good report on the situations. Uh, regarding the HIV infection rate, West Papua has also the uh, rate much higher than other provinces in Indonesia. So this is also worrying, knowing that because of many reasons, the HIV uh, AIDS prevalence is one of the highest in Indonesia. Regarding the education, uh, the, the teacher-student uh, ration is growing, but it is still quite poor at the primary school education level. And therefore, there is a recommendation coming from us on the need to better train uh, teachers as they are very needed, especially teachers coming from the indigenous Papuan. I think it's very much needed that the indigenous Papuan teachers 
are supposed to be able to understand the culture much better and the need much better than the teachers coming from outside uh, West Papua. As, as I said in the beginning that the literacy rate uh, in Papua uh, is lower in comparison with other provinces in Indonesia. We can see here that there is an increase from the 70% to 75% in 2017, while in the rest of Indonesia, uh, the literacy rate is 96%. Uh, and then uh, we also found that uh, the literacy rate is higher uh, among girls in comparison to uh, boys. And then another finding is the gap uh, where the teachers let the student pass exams so that the dropout statistics will, uh, will remain low. So it is very much worrying because the capacity, uh, the capacity might not uh, fulfill the requirements, but the exams are facilitated by the, the teachers so that uh, the statistic will show that the exam, uh, uh, the numbers or the percentage of those who pass the exam will remain high, while in fact the quality of education or the, quality, the capacity of students uh, in fact is not as uh, high as expected in the requirements of the exam. So you have the report, uh, some of them are there, and uh, I will read some of the key recommendations from this report in which we believe that we will stand ready to discuss with the Indonesian government uh, on how to improve the situation in West Papua. So the first report, uh, the first recommendations is to end the killing and torture of indigenous Papuan and to hold all the security forces uh, to be accountable and the court has to be transparent. So it has been a call for us for years to uh, make the perpetrators accountable and uh, the process uh, should be as transparent as possible. And the second recommendation is about access to West Papua. So as it was promised by the Indonesian government about the opening access to West Papua, but we still uh, express our concerns that it is not yet the case. So that's why we would like to, uh, the Indonesian government to open access to all foreign journalists, civil society organizations, as well as the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, uh, as well as the special prosecutors to come to Papua. Uh, we acknowledge that there, were, uh, there was a visit of the special rapporteur on right to health in 2000 and, uh, 2017, but it was the last visit done by the uh, UN Special Rapporteur. And there was a promise also of, uh, from the President Chokowi that uh, someone from the Office of the High Commissioner will be allowed to go to West Papua, but until today that promise has not been fulfilled. And we will also to emphasize on the need to respect, protect the freedom of assembly, freedom of associations, freedom of expressions, freedom of political opinions in peaceful manner, and in particular when there is a uh, divergence or differ uh, idea from uh, the state ideology. Uh, we also would like uh, the Indonesian government to prioritize the accessibility, adequacy, availability, and quality of healthcare and education for the indigenous uh, Papuans, once again, for indigenous Papuans, as uh, they are often living outside the urban areas, especially in the high, high mountains and in the rural areas. And we would like Indonesian government also to criminalize uh, the violations of free, prior, and informed consent principles, uh, as well as to stop the devastation of the primary rainforest that have been uh, exploited very much for industrial and agricultural uh, development. As we know that the forest uh, becomes the main source of livelihood of the indigenous Papuan. The next one is to stop the transmigrations knowing that many of the conflicts, uh, uh, the root causes of the conflicts are the conflicts between uh, the mar because of the marginalization of the West Papuan and uh, the fact that there is a discrepancy between uh, the migrants and the West Papuans in several sectors of, the, uh, uh, of their life. And then last but not least is to retake again the dialogue. The dialogue for us is very important. Open an inclusive dialogue between the West Papuans and the Indonesian government. Uh, initiative of dialogues have started a few years ago, and there are some ideas coming up, uh, and I've been informed that there is also a willingness to reopen again. For us, dialogue is very important to address the root causes so that finally we can have the uh, sustainable solutions on the situation in West Papua. So I thank you.
So th thank you very much, Budi, uh, for this overview of the report. You will also see at the end of the report a summary and synthesis of the current debate inside the United Nations on the situation in West Papua, in the General Assembly, in the Human Rights Council, in particular under the Universal Periodic Reviews, and the nine different special rapporteurs who have taken up the issue over the last two, three years, as well as uh, some committees, in particular the Committee on Elimination of Racial Discrimination, which I already referred to. Now, we would like to listen to uh, Mr. Peter Proof, uh, who has been coordinating, leading a delegation in Papua last year. Maybe you can, you can explain it better than I would do so. I'm very happy that uh, Peter is here. He, he is in Geneva for many, many years. He knows the world uh, system of the churches, of the UN, and so you are most welcome with us. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, Adrian Claude. Um, before I begin my remarks, let me first of all acknowledge and appreciate the presence of a representative from the Indonesian Permanent Mission. Uh, we're very grateful to you, Adi, and to your ambassador and your delegation for your continued attention to what we seek to present to you and for your engagement in conversation with us. Uh, and I also want to express appreciation for the way in which the Indonesian authorities enabled the delegation to which Adrian Claude just referred to take place last year. Indeed, it was almost exactly a year ago that some of us here in this room, uh, Budi, uh, Thomas, myself, uh, were about to embark upon a delegation visit to Indonesia and in particular to Papua and Papua, ba pa Papua Barat. Um, to my knowledge, this delegation, which comprised 20 individuals, was the largest international delegation of any kind ever to have uh, visited the territory since it was integrated into Indonesia in 1969. The delegation traveled quite widely throughout the territory. <coughs> we visited uh, at least four separate locations. Uh, including Jayapura, Wamena, Merauke, and Manokwari. And we were hosted there by the World Council of Churches member church, the Christian Evangelical Church of Tana Papua. Um, during our visit, we met with many different counterparts. We met with local church leaders, with human rights defenders, with victims of human rights violations and internally displaced people. We met with the governors of both provinces, the leaders of the People's Representative Council of the province of Papua and of the Papuan People's Council, and the Bupatis or the mayors of several regencies, police officials and military commanders. So we received a broad range of perspectives on the situation in the territory. Now, for us in the World Council of Churches, the situation in Papua, and particularly from the perspective of the indigenous Papuan people, has been a very long-standing concern. We've had several previous smaller delegations um, travel to the territory over the years, over the decades. There was a delegation in 1999 and in 2008, as well as the delegation last year. The outcomes or the observations from all of those delegations have remained depressingly the same. We have throughout that period observed high levels of violence and of human rights violations, including of economic, social and cultural rights. We have observed with concern the integration process and its effects on the indigenous Papuan people, concerns regarding transmigration and demographic shifts, environmental concerns resulting from the accelerating exploitation of Papua's natural resources, and the need for national dialogue. Those concerns remained all the same, and with the same level of salience as on previous trips 10, 20, and more years ago. In particular, the significant demographic transition that has taken place and is taking place, I mean, statistics are disputed, but it's very clear that 
in practice, the indigenous Papuan community are being uh, rendered a minority, certainly in terms of power, in their own territory. The high levels of violence and related human rights violations continue to be reported, and during immediately before our visit, there was a particularly severe spike following uh, an incident on the 2nd of December 2018, uh, the consequences of which in terms of displacement and uh, violence and human rights violations were still being felt during our visit in February last year and continue to be felt today. What particularly struck me is that there seemed to be, for those who were displaced and who are suffering as a result of these events, there seemed to be little, if any, humanitarian response, either from national authorities and certainly in terms of international humanitarian presence, there is none, at least very little. And that really is a serious concern from our point of view. We observed also um, that while there is very evident increase in the development of infrastructure and economic development in the territory, essentially all the indigenous Papuans we met with felt that this was not for them, not for the indigenous Papuan um, uh, community, but for others. Widespread concern in general about the model of development that's being pursued in Papua with lots of reports of land grabbing and unsustainable exploitation of Papua's natural resources, including in particular the forestry, the forests which are, as Budi has mentioned, a, a traditional source of the livelihoods of indigenous people from which they are now excluded increasingly and those forests given over to either logging or to palm oil uh, plantations, vast palm oil plantations. I might pause there for a, for a moment and mention that I think you're all aware that there are a certain number of remaining pockets of rainforest area that are, in essence, the lungs of the planet as a whole. And Indonesia is one of those areas in which these remaining lungs are still there. The fact that logging and deforestation in Papua is essentially not monitored because of the relative lack of international access to the territory is and should be a grave concern in this regard for all of us. With regard to the special autonomy law arrangements that have been made for Papua since uh, 2001, all the indigenous Papuans that we encountered felt that this law had been either not fully or consistently implemented by the government of Indonesia, and in any event, had failed to reverse the process of marginalization and exclusion of indigenous Papuans. Now, the situation hasn't got any better since we were there a year ago. On the contrary, um, a number of escalations, violent escalations of the situation have occurred in the meantime, prompting the, ind the indigenous Papuan church leaders that are part of our constituency to write several urgent appeals to us, to the Indonesian government, and to the wider international community, which we've sought to engage and to, and to um, convey. It has also in turn prompted us in this coalition to write a couple of urgent appeals to uh, a number of the special procedures of the UN Human Rights Council. Uh, we issued one on the 14th of March last year, shortly after our return, about the security force operations in the Regency of Nduga, causing the displacement of thousands of indigenous people. We issued one again in September last year about the uh, violent crackdown on anti-racism protesters uh, in parts of uh, Papua province and the, the casualties resulting from that. I would at this point like to say that once again appreciation to the uh, Indonesian delegation here and to Ambassador Kleip for his persistent expression of openness to hearing our recommendations of how to address problems in the region, acknowledging that there are serious problems in the region. So I want to again take that opportunity to respond to that invitation and here now say that I do have some specific requests and recommendations to the Indonesian government. Many of them have already been expressed in this report. On the issue of international humanitarian access specifically, I would like to ask the Indonesian government to allow and indeed to expedite the re-establishment of an ICRC presence in Papua. 
a presence that was terminated in 2009 and should certainly be re-established in the light of events last year and continuing today. So I would strongly press that appeal. I think it's a reasonable appeal. We also certainly call on the Indonesian government, under the leadership of President Jokowi, to fulfill the promises that have been made for a comprehensive dialogue with the representatives of the Papuan people that is not predicated or limited to issues of levels of budgetary allocation for development in Papua, given what we saw about that, wh the way that development proceeds and who it does and doesn't benefit. And by the way, I think that the issue of development assistance from the central government needs to be reality checked against the value of resources extracted from Papuan territory, including also taxation revenue from foreign companies exploiting resources in that context. I think that one of the key um, responses that the Indonesian government ought to do is to simply make more access more consistently available. I think what we see happening in Papua is, is a classic case of what happens when things are kept out of view when things are hidden, when things are not addressed in terms of root causes. I appeal to the Indonesian government to do more of what you did for us last year, to allow access and not to constrain it, to allow not only international humanitarian access, but also human rights monitoring access, uh, journalists and uh, media access, so that we can shine some light on this situation and help to address it together and to resolve the root causes of the crisis that continues to unfold persistently in Papua. Thank you. Thank you. And the last speaker uh, before the question and answers uh, will be the one who came specially from uh, Papua, Theo Ezegem. Theo, you are a human rights defender from the islands in West Papua. You are the director of the Foundation for Justice and Integrity of the Papuan People, which is called, uh, it is so difficult for me to read, uh, Yayasan Kadilan Dan Ketuhan Manusia Papua. Hmm? And you are based in Vamena. You have been uh, in the region on several uh, cases, five cases, uh, missions to investigate the situation of the people in the Duga region where there is a heavily uh, conflict and repression. So I give you the floor and uh, I ask Budi to come here because he will speak in Bahasa and Budi will uh, translate. Yeah? Dengan, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. He will uh, use the PowerPoint presentations and I will translate into uh, Bahasa Indonesia. In any case, the PowerPoint presentation will be in English. Terima kasih atas kesempatan untuk saya bisa sampaikan beberapa hal di sini. So I would like to thank you all for the opportunity to present the cases uh, at this occasion. Ini konflik di Nduga. So this is about the conflict in Nduga region in the highlands. Saya investigasi Nduga bolak-balik lima kali. I've been investigating the cases in Nduga uh, through five uh, visits. Dan tidak ada lembaga yang masuk. And uh, apart from us, there is no other institution who ha who could visit the place. It 
itu lembaga saya. Nama saya TWC Game sudah dijelaskan tadi. Saya direktur eksekutif Yayasan Keadilan dan Keutuhan Manusia Papua. So this is information about me. My name is Theo Hasegem, and I am uh, the, the executive director of the Foundation for Justice and Integrity of the Papuan People. Tanggal 2 Desember 2018, itu terjadi pembantaian terhadap karyawan PT Istaka Karya. So on the 2nd of December 2018, they were massacred uh, against a company called Istaka Karya. Yang dilakukan oleh OPM. It was done by the uh, pro Papua Independent Movement. Tanggal 3 Desember itu terjadi penyerangan OPM serang kantor Batalion 756, kantor militer. So on the 3rd of December, this pro uh, independent Papuan movement attack a military post. Tanggal 4 Desember itu operasi militer. On the 4th December, the military operation started. Dan waktu kami masuk, menemukan beberapa korban di lokasi. And when, when we came afterward, we found some victims in the locations of the uh, attack. Kami membentuk satu tim besar, pemerintah, TNI, Polri, dan kami dari LSM. So we uh, formed a investigation, investigation team that was composed by uh, the military, the police, uh, and the NGOs, as well as the government. Untuk evakuasi karyawan PST Istaka Karya yang dibunuh oleh OPM. So the purpose is to evacuate the victims of the attack by OPM uh, especially the workers of Istaka Karya Company. Kita kema penduma tanggal 13 Desem Desember 2018. So, on the 13 December 2018, we went to Mapenduma, the nearby town. Uh, 2018, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ini kantor militer, kantor TNI. So, so this picture of the military post. Dan tempat ini diserang oleh OPM. This is the post that was attacked by the pro-independent movement. Ada dua orang anggota TNI yang ditembak oleh OPM. So two members of the Indonesian military were shot by the OPM, this the pro-independent pro -independent movement. Dan satu orang meninggal dan satu mengalami luka-luka. One was killed, the other one was injured. Ini distrik Mapenduma. So this is in the Mapenduma Dist district, district Mbua, Kabupaten Duga. So this is in Mbua district in the Regency of uh, Duga. Ini perjalanan kami setelah bentuk tim ke Mapenduma, ke Mbua. So this is the uh, team that went to uh, Mbua. Kami harus bentuk tim karena korban-korban yang mau dievakuasi di Gunung Kabo itu sangat sulit karena OPM sedang jaga di situ. So we had to have this team because for us to evacuate the victims in this area was quite, quite difficult because the, the pro-independent Papua movement was around the place. Dan kami harus menolong orang-orang itu untuk evakuasi ke kota. So we had to help them to, uh, uh, we, have, we have to help to evacuate them to the nearby uh, towns. Dan saya sampaikan ke Dandim bahwa kita akan mencari bersama. And I spoke to the head of the Indonesian military, uh, the, the local Indonesian military commander, that we have to work together. Ini kita ke Gunung Kabo. This place is called Gunung Kabo. Gunung Kabo, tempat di mana OPM eksekusi karyawan PT Istaka Karya. So this place is precisely the place where the uh, uh, workers of Istaka Karya Company were killed by the pro-independent pro Papuan movement. Kami tidak bisa cari masuk ke hutan karena te polisi datang dan kita tidak sempat untuk mencari empat korban yang diduga hilang. So we could not go to the forest because the police came and we could not, could, we could not have the access to uh, the forest to find the allegedly four missing person. Dan itu pos militer di 
district Dal. And uh, there is also a uh, military post in Dal district. Dan saya sampaikan ke Dandim, kita tidak bisa cari karena polisi datang dan kalau kita mencari itu kami bisa jadi korban karena kalau terjadi baku tembak. And I, uh, he told the, uh, the local military commander that they couldn't go because the police came to that area. And if there is any uh, armed uh, uh, exchange between the police and uh, the pro-independent Papuan movement, uh, the, he can be the victim of that uh, exchange. Ini korban salah satu korban masyarakat dari PT Istaka Karya. So uh, this is the coffin of one of the victims of the workers of Istaka Karya Company. Ini di evakuasi ke Wamena. So the dead body is uh, was being evacuated uh, to Wamena. 16 orang evakuasi ke Timika. And the other 16 were evacuated to another city called Timika. Empat orang diduga hilang. And we predicted that the uh, four persons were still missing. Satu di evakuasi ke Wamena. And one of them were evacuated to Wamena. Dan saya sendiri membawa karangan bunga sebagai seorang pembela ham kepada keluarga korban. So me myself, he uh, brought the uh, flower just to express the uh, condolence for the family of the victims because he is a human right defender. Diantar dan dikasih pulang ke kampung. Uh, Diantar kasih pulang ke kampung Toraja. Uh, and the dead body was sent back to another island, uh, the place called Toraja, to the family. Ini diduga anak ini kena bom ledakan. So allegedly, uh, this kid was a victim of explosions uh, from the military. Hasil kesehatan yang dilakukan oleh tim kesehatan. So this is the result of investigation by the uh, medical team. Tapi sulit membuktikan. Karena itu dua bahasa. Dan TNI mengatakan itu bukan bom. Dan itu bahan peledak. So it was difficult to prove because there are two different uh, language or te uh, terminology. Uh, the military said that it was, it was not a result of bomb, but it was a result of explosion. Masyarakat, versi masyarakat itu bom. But for the uh, uh, local people, it, is, it was a bom. Dan ini perlu ada, perlu membuktikan. But we need to uh, prove it. Antara dua pendapat itu. Because there are two different opinions. <coughs> ini kuburan. So this is the cemetery, the burial. Kuburan dua di sana itu uh, orang tua yang keluar dari rumah dan kemudian stroke lalu meninggal. So the two burials were old people who went out from the house and they got stroke then they died. Yang ke sini yang di sini itu kita menemukan di hutan di kebun-kebun tanggal 14 Desember. And on the 14th of December we found uh, another burial that was in uh, the garden or the yard of uh, local people. Saya sendiri yang datang ke situ dan mengambil foto. And this picture, I took it myself. Yang satu itu di, yang sana ditembak, di leher. So one, the, the victim of there, uh, was shot uh, on the neck. Dan tembus di punggung belakang. And uh, it went through the, to his back. Yang satunya itu di, Dia menjelaskan ke saya bahwa ditembak dua kali, tapi lompat dan bersembunyi. And the person, the, the survivor, he said that he was shot twice and he jumped and he ran to hide. Ini nama-nama orang yang hilang. So these are the names of the missing person. Waktu kami ada di Buah. Uh, it was given when we were in Buah. Tapi kami belum harus cek lagi apakah mereka sudah kembali atau belum. We need to double check again whether they are uh, they, they come back or not. Ini rumah-rumah yang di dirusak. So these uh, are the houses that were destroyed di ma, di Mbua oleh aparat. So uh, it was done uh, in Mbua by the military. 
ini pengungsi. This are the pengungsi saat itu. These are the internally displaced persons. Mereka semua melarikan diri ke hutan. They were running away to the forest. Dan tidak bisa tinggal di rumah. They were afraid to stay in their own houses. Mereka sedang berjalan. They are walking as you can see. Pengungsi sampai hari ini masih ada di beberapa kabupaten. Until now, those who were displaced are still found in uh, different regencies. Wamena. Wamena. Lanijaya. Lanijaya. Timika. Timika. Dan Kenyam, kota kabupaten Kenyam. And Kenyam, it's the uh, capital of uh, the region, Enduga. Beberapa distrik kosong, tidak ada orang. In some districts, there were no more uh, displaced person. Oh, I'm sorry. The, in some district, uh, it was completely empty because people run away. Ini pos Mapenduma. So this is the, the military post in Mapenduma. Mereka sedang menempati di tempat ini. So they stayed in this uh, region. Di bawah ini gereja. Uh, the second picture is a church. Tanggal 26 saya ke Mapenduma. 26 apa? 26 Februari. On the, 2019. on the 26th February 2019, I went to Mapenduma. Mencari pendeta yang diduga ditembak oleh militer. I was trying to find a pastor who was allegedly uh, shot by the military. Saya ketemu anggota yang ada di sana. So I met with uh, the congregations over there. Minta izin mereka untuk saya bisa melihat dan mencari pendeta yang diduga ditembak oleh oleh TNI yang diduga oleh keluarga. I asked the permission to, uh, to find the allegedly uh, the, the pastor who was allegedly shot by the military. Di bawah ini gereja. So the second picture is a, this, the church. Gereja ini menurut masyarakat di sana mengatakan hampir satu minggu ditempati oleh TNI. According to uh, the local people, this uh, church was occupied by the military for the whole week. Kami mendatangkan dari 12 camp masyarakat sipil yang ada di hutan-hutan. Dari 12 titik. So we visited 12 uh, uh, places where the, the IDPs uh, stayed. Dan kami melakukan pertemuan di sana dan mereka sampaikan begitu. And we met with the people and uh, we listened to uh, their views. Masyarakat juga sampaikan takut dua-dua. Masyarakat juga sampaikan takut TNI, takut OPM. So they said that they were afraid of both the uh, Indonesian military as well as the pro independent uh, pro papua independent movement karena mereka pegang senjata dua-dua pegang senjata because both groups they have uh, weapons dan kami bisa jadi korban and they were afraid of being victims ini pendeta Gebin, Gejimin Nirigi this is uh, pastor Gejimin Nirigi Gejimin Nirigi diduga oleh keluarga ditembak oleh TNI so according to the family, his family, uh, uh, he was allegedly shot by the uh, military. Dan dibakar. And he was burned. Dan TNI mengatakan dia masih hidup. According to the Indonesian military, uh, he was still alive. Dan saya pastikan saat itu pendeta ini tidak ada. And I could uh, ensure that this uh, pastor, has, uh, he, he is no longer there. Dan saya sampaikan kepada Panglima dan Komandan. Itu setelah saya masuk ke Nduga, Pak Pendeta tidak ada di tempat. And I've spoken to the Indonesian uh, uh, military commander that this pastor is not in the place anymore. Could not be found anymore. Ini U.S. Wiyange. This is U.S. Wiyange. U.S. Wiyange mengaku dipukul dengan popot senjata. Uh, he said that he, he was hit uh, in his forehead by the rifle butt. Di lapangan terbang Mapenduma. In Mapendu Mapenduma Airport. Ini kondisi sekolah. This is a situation of a school. Sekolah tidak berjalan. Uh, it doesn't function anymore. Anak-anak semua mengungsi keluar ke hutan. All the children uh, are displaced and they are now in the forest. Guru-guru... Non Papua juga yang ada di situ melarikan diri karena takut OPM. The non Papuan teachers, non indigenous people, uh, teachers, they also run away because they are afraid of the pro, in, pro Papuan independent movement. Karena situasi tidak aman. Because the situation is not safe anymore. Ini rumah-rumah warga. These are the houses of the uh, local people. 
Ini foto saya sendiri. So I took these pictures myself. Saya datang dari rumah ke rumah dan ambil foto satu per satu. So I visited the, the houses and I took the picture one by one. Semua pintu dirusak. And as you can see, the uh, doors were destroyed. Barang-barang yang ada di dalam dihamburkan. So uh, the belongings were uh, thrown out. Ini Raga Kogoya. This this lady is called Raga Kogoya. Dia ditangkap oleh aparat polisi. He was arrested by the police. She was arrested by the police. Setelah kita keluar dari mapen dari buah. When we visited Mbua. Dan saya minta aparat bebaskan dia. And I ask uh, the Indonesian uh, police to bail her out. Karena penangkapan itu tidak ada surat perintah penangkapan. Because there is no warrant of arrest against her. Sekarang dia bebas. Now she is uh, released from from the police station. Di bawah ini foto yang berikut itu kita pertemuan dengan badan intelijen dari Kodam. So the, pic uh, the following picture is the picture with the intelijen from... Uh, the military commander uh, office. Setelah kami pulang dari Mapenduma. After I came back from Mapenduma. Dia menelpon. They dia call, menelpon kami. They called us. Dan kami izinkan untuk dia bisa pertemuan dengan kami terbuka. And then we had an open meeting with them. Dan dia datang dan kita bertemu. So we had a meeting. Dan saya menjelaskan seluruh kondisi Mapenduma. So, and I spoke about the situation in Mapenduma. Ini kondisi sekolah di Wamena. This is the uh, uh, situations of schools in Wamena. Anak-anak semua bersekolah di Wamena. Now those who were displaced, uh, they uh, study in Wamena. Ini sekolah darurat yang kita bangun untuk anak-anak sekolah karena menurut kami pendidikan penting. This are the emergency schools that we established because for us education is very important. Sampai hari ini anak-anak sekitar 900 anak-anak yang sekolah di situ. So until now there are about 900 children uh, studying in this emergency schools. Foto yang lain itu kondisi pengungsi yang ada di Wamena. Other pictures are the pictures of the internally displaced person in Wamena. Ini kuburan yang saya baru bongkar. This is a burial that I just uh, exhumed, excavated. Ada lima orang yang diduga ditembak. Oleh militer, oleh dari keluarga, dugaan dari keluarga. There were uh, allegations from the members of the family that there were five uh, person who were shot by the Indonesian military. Mereka ada lima orang. Lima there, orang. There were five uh, victims. Dan saya bongkar kuburan ini dan foto-foto semua saya kasih kepada komandan militer. I exhumed uh, the cemetery with others and I uh, shared the pictures to the Indonesian military commander. Ini nama-namanya. These are the names of the victims. Ini bukti-bukti yang lain. This are uh, additional uh, uh, proof. Itu foto korban di sana. Uh, on the upper side, this is the picture of the di body sini, of the victim. Di sini tempat pemakaman. And this is the burial. Nah, di situ saya menemukan kaleng anggota TNI. So I found uh, there a tin, uh, a foot tin of the Indonesian military. Saya juga menemukan selongsong, dua selongsong peluru, itu nomor, nomor serinya. I also found two uh, bullets, and as you can, you can see, there's a series, uh, a number. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. Thank you, Theo. Thank you. Thank you. So now it's uh, time for questions. You can ask your questions in English or in French, uh, no problem. So if those who have a microphone, just push on the red button in front of you and please say your name and uh, tell who you ask the question to. Any questions in the room? Sir? Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Anindityo Adi Primasto. I'm from the Indonesian, Indonesian mission uh, to the UN in Geneva. Uh, as uh, you know, I was, I was waiting for others to, to ask questions, but uh, since I see none, I, I allow myself to try to ask this question. 
Um, uh, th thank you very much, first of all, for the organizers for inviting us to participate in this press conference. Uh, very much appreciated. It is, it is very much in line with our uh, our vision of con continuing dialogue with uh, with uh, with all stakeholders in in in, in our effort to try to resolve the challenges that we have in the provinces of uh, Papua and West Papua in Indonesia. Um, uh, I, I thank uh, pa, pa Budi, pa, pa Teo as well, uh, pa, uh, Mr. Proof, for the presentations. And uh, uh, I, I, I've, I've, I have to be honest that I haven't read the whole, uh, the whole uh, report yet of the ICP. But I, 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 I heard quite clearly the recommendations that were made earlier this morning to the government. You know, we take note of it. We take note of the, the recommendations, but that what I have to comment on, on, on several of the things. Um, Mr. Mr. Proof before mentioned that the root cause of, of the, the challenges in, in, in Papua is, is marginalization. Uh, it's, it's of people being excluded from, 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 from life and governance. And, and uh, I guess I think the, 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 the problem goes um, a little bit uh, more deeper than that. Um, we, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is not uh, true to say that um, the Indonesian government has not done anything to try to improve the situation or to try to reverse this, uh, uh, this marginalization. But th the fact is that we've attempted and, uh, and we've accelerated. We've tried to accelerate development. And you, when, you, you, when you say that you know, this economic approach is not working and it's not accepted by Papuan people, it's kind of, it's kind of um, uh, strange for me to hear because uh, you mentioned about the pandemics happening in, 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 in the uh, healthcare not being up to par. Our, our response to that would be that we are trying to. We are trying to make healthcare quality better by, among other things, uh, developing infrastructure in, in Papua. And, and what the, the, the report, I think, doesn't quite uh, mention is the security dimension of, of it. You know, we, the security dimension of the report. You you claim that the healthcare is there as if it's standing in a vacuum. But what we're trying to say is that, in order for for our healthcare um, professionals to to be there, there needs to be a guarantee of security. Uh, Pateo Pateo has again has mentioned quite quite clearly that you know pe people there they're afraid of they say that they're afraid of the military and of, as well as for the. Armed separatist movements. You know, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a harsh reality that we are trying to deal with. On our side, we've we've mentioned we've, uh, we've tried to tell the military to stop. You know, you, you need to respect human rights, and 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 refrain from unnecessary or excessive action. We that is what this uh, that is our part. Oops. Okay. Yes. Just push again, but. Oh yeah. Just, just, just the the the, the point that I'm trying to get. I think the security aspect, the guarantee of security for people to try to um, uh, develop Papua should also be addressed accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, interesting question about security. Uh, can you uh, afford security? And this is an important element of uh, the, the this uh, situation. Mr. Zoller, do you want to answer? Yeah, I, I advise you to read one full chapter on security before saying that we don't speak on security. This is uh, section number seven. It is from page 190 to 212. That's first. The second is security is also dealt with in other chapters with the increasing military and police operations everywhere in the territory. Third is that security for the Papuan people is also a matter of concern. When groups of Indonesian inhabitants are throwing bags full of snakes into student dormitory. This is a fact acknowledged by everyone. You cannot see that there is no security problem for Papuan students. 
This is how it started last August. So if you have a question, we are ready to answer it. If you bring your own vision, that's fine, in the framework of a dialogue. But this vision now should be based on concrete facts. We have here produced facts. And you cannot simply dismiss a report. This is a credible report. Two years' work, 40 organizations, with the support of Amnesty, Human Rights Watch, everyone. It is not the first one. Uh, I think that the problem is the substance of the report we have to address, and not the report to be dismissed. The substance is the survival of the people. This is our concern. The substance is that finally we want to have changes, not in policies, changes regarding the human rights abuses affecting the Papuan people. Thank you, Mr. Zoller. Mr. Prov, you want to ask? Just very quickly, I actually want to join uh, Adi in confessing that I myself have not managed to read uh, fully such a voluminous report. What I would say, though, is, um, uh, and to acknowledge that the Indonesian government is doing stuff um, uh, in the territory and making some attempts, our query is about the orientation of those efforts, and in particular with regard to the security situation. So what we've seen over the decades, and which we remarked upon last year, and we remark upon to get again today, is that the prevailing orientation of the Indonesian government's response or approach to the situation in uh, Papua is a military security one. And that's exactly the problem. What we're trying to say is that underneath the security issues, which to which Indonesia responds with a very heavy hand in military security terms, are deep uh, issues of, indeed, marginalization, of exclusion, uh, and of replacement, basically, of the Indi Indonesian uh, Papuan population. And the numbers speak for themselves, Adi. If you look at the health statistics and the education statistics, as well as, of course, the statistics regarding extrajudicial killings in Papua, you can see where the burden falls. Thanks. Thank you. Is there another question? Yes, sure. Short response. Baik, uh, soal keamanan itu OPM itu tidak ada di kota. So regarding mm. uh, the security, uh, the pro Papuan independent movement, they are not in the urban areas. OPM itu ada di hutan-hutan. They are in the forest. Jadi saya pikir kalau pendekatan dilakukan pendekatan persuasif itu bisa dilakukan. And I believe that uh, uh, the approach is done by persuasive uh, approach, it can be done. Dan saya selalu ikut pertemuan dengan pejabat petinggi dari Jakarta yang datang di Jayapura. I've always been involved in uh, meetings uh, with the Indonesian uh, officers, including those who come from the capital. Dan saya bilang dialog itu penting. And I said, dialogue is key. It's very important. Sebelum masyarakat Papua banyak yang mati. Sebelum uh, banyak mati masyarakat Papua. Before we let the Papuan people die. Dan saya sampaikan, kalau ketemu Egyanus, saya bisa bertemu untuk koordinasi dengan kelompok OPM untuk berdialog. If uh, it is required, I can help to facilitate the dialogue with the pro-independent uh, movement, with Egyanus, the, the, their leader. Dan itu saya kasih tahu kepada komandan militer dan komandan TNI, eh, komandan polisi. I've uh, spoken uh, like this to the uh, commander of the military as well as the commander of the police. Dan mereka harus tahu apa tujuan Egyanus berjuang di hutan. And they need to understand what is the purpose of Egyanus, the head of the pa pro-independent Papuan uh, struggle. Karena tidak pernah bertemu, masih berbeda pendapat, sehingga masyarakat sipil jadi korban. Since they have, they have never met, uh, there is uh, different opinions. As a result, the uh, civilians are victimized. 
Dan itu saya bicara di mana-mana. Kasih tahu juga ke Komnas HAM di Jakarta. I've spoken uh, in different places, including uh, at the National Commission on Human Rights. Kasih tahu juga kepada tim yang dibentuk oleh Menko Polhukam bahwa pertemuan dialog itu penting. And I've informed as well uh, to the uh, team that is now being uh, established by the Indonesian Ministry of uh, Law and Human Rights. Dan laporan duga itu kami sudah kasih ke mana-mana. And the report on the, uh, the the situation in Duga, the cases of Duga, I have distributed in many uh, uh, institutions. Kasih ke Panglima TNI di Jakarta. The commander of the Indonesian military in Jakarta. Kasih ke Kapolri. The head of the Indonesian police. Kasih ke Komnas HAM. The National Commission on Human Rights. Kasih juga ke KSP. Sekretariat Kepresidenan. Also to the advisors of the president. Kasih juga ke Menko Polukam. And also to the Ministry of uh, Politik, Law and Human Right. Yeah. Terima kasih. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there other questions? If, sir, one question. My name is Edward Flynn. Um, I work with Vivat International. Uh, my question to Two brief questions to Theo. Theo, you mentioned that you went to Nduga after the incident in December 2018 to observe and monitor and record uh, what had happened. You, you said that you were the only group or you were the only organization that went there. Is there a particular reason why you were the only group that went? <coughs> My second question is with regard to a slide that you uh, presented where uh, there were a group of graves identified and a number of people were identified being in those graves. Was there a detailed examination of the bodies of those people in those graves? Thank you. Uh, yang pertama, tim investigasi mau kenduga itu juga sebenarnya agak sedikit sulit. So to be very frank, it was very difficult to establish a team to uh, access to, to have access to Nduga. Karena masih terus perang antara OPM dan TNI. There were ongoing conflict between uh, the pro Papuan independent movement and the Indonesian military. Dan saya saja yang bisa masuk. And it was only me and my team who could have the access. Sampai lima kali masuk ke kampung-kampung. I went there five times, including in the uh, rural areas of that place. Dan saya sudah sampaikan ke Komnas HAM untuk bentuk satu tim untuk masuk ke Nduga. And I, ha I have asked the National Commission on Human Rights also to establish a team to visit Nduga. Dan isu disetujui hanya belum dibentuk oleh Komnas HAM. While the National Commission has agreed with the idea, but uh, in reality, the team has not been established yet. Nah, untuk untuk 21 orang yang ditembak di Nduga oleh oleh OPM. Regarding the 21 uh, uh, workers of this company uh, who were shot in Nduga menurut, by OPM. Menurut OPM, mereka itu militer. According to the pro Papuan independent movement, uh, these people were members of Indonesian military. Tapi saya sebagai seorang pembela HAM sulit membuktikan bahwa mereka adalah militer. But as human rights defenders, I don't have any proof that they were members of the Indonesian military. Karena OPM tidak menunjukkan kartu ardikat sebagai anggota TNI. Because uh, the uh, pro-independent movement, they didn't show us the proof that they were the member, the victims were member of the Indonesian military. Tidak bisa menunjukkan senjata yang dirampas. They could not, uh, the, the pro-independent movement, they could not prove as well on the weapons used by this, the, the workers. Dan logika seorang pembelaham, mereka adalah masyarakat sipil. And as human rights defender, in my understanding, these victims are civilian. Dan saya bicara di mana-mana juga untuk mereka. So I speak also, uh, I, I sit in several places to say that they, they were uh, civilians. Nah, yang kedua, kedua itu apa tadi? Tentang kuburan yang... Ya, yang kuburan yang saya buka itu saya minta izin penjaminan keamanan kepada komandan militer. 
So uh, before uh, exfiltrating the uh, graves, I uh, ask uh, security guarantee from the uh, commander of the local military unit. Dan keluarga sampaikan tentara masih jaga di tempat itu. Uh, and beforehand, uh, the members of the family said that uh, the graves were guarded by the Indonesian military. Dan komandan militer menyetujui untuk saya dan keluarga masuk buka kuburan itu. And finally, the, the military agreed to uh, provide me the access to the graves. Dan saya sampaikan kepada komandan militer, apapun yang ada di lapangan, bukti-bukti saya akan kirim. And I've uh, promised uh, to the uh, military commander that whatever proof that I could uh, collect from the graves, I will share the information to, to, to them. Bukti-bukti tadi itu saya sudah kirim kepada komandan militer. So I've uh, sent uh, the proofs, as you could see, to the Indonesian military commander. Dan kasus ini akan saya laporkan kepada aparat penegak hukum. So I will uh, report this case to the law enforcement uh, in Indonesia. Dan tentara, polisi, dan kami sudah sepakat kemungkinan akan bentuk tim kembali untuk lihat kasus itu. The police and the military and uh, the civil society, we have agreed that we might uh, establish a team to investigate the case. Tapi kami hanya menemukan satu badan. But so far, I could only f uh, we could only found one body. Dari yang lima orang itu. From the uh, allegedly five victims. Kita saya minta mereka buka semua tapi secara psikologis keluarga korban semua terganggu. Uh, we, I wanted to uh, open the graves to see the proof but uh, the family said that uh, it's the, the fact is very disturbing so they, they didn't want it. Dan saya minta ditutup saja kembali. So that, that therefore uh, the grave was closed again. Yeah. Thank you. Is there another question if not we perhaps can move to the concluding comments mr zoller thank you very much thank you uh, this is uh, this last question an information to be shared tomorrow in the un in your meeting with the special rapporteur and the assistance on summary execution. Uh, now we give the floor to our outsider, if I may call it, you like this, Mark, uh, for some remarks uh, in the conclusions. And then uh, Budi and myself, we shall give her one or two sentences. Please. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mark Doris. I'm from Ireland. I was the uh, chair of the West Papua Support Group in Ireland for 10 years, from 1995 to 2005. Um, my first, um, my first um, uh, remark is about Indonesia. Um, <coughs> Indonesia has been go undergoing um, reforms and um, and dem dem democratization over the last 20 years, and there's been, there's been great hope for the country. And in many ways, it's a wonderful country, very diverse and a very beautiful country. And um, uh, they, we have a we have a, a, a representative of the Ind Indonesian mission here today. However, um, West Papua is an embarrassment um, to to Indonesia, and it continues to be. Um, and I, my my strong hope would be that this um, this embarrassment would be lifted, and I think it would help Indonesia in general. Um, I have I have three points. Um, Peter Proof um, said that there were three three delegations from the World uh, Council of Churches, uh, 1999, 2008, and also last year, 2019, and the reports are depressingly the same. The depressingly, the same issues are coming up, and this is my experience as well. I was um, following West Papua very closely for for ten years, and also in, intermittently since then. And it's the same themes that keep coming up. And I, I, I'm going to pick three themes to to um, to point out in my in my in my, in my, in my brief, brief remarks. Um, the first one is about um, uh, non-governmental organisation and, and journalist access into the country. Um, we had a journalist from Switzerland actually in Ireland in 2000 in, in the year 2000 in December 2000. Um, he was arrested by the Indonesian military because um, he was reporting in the country. I think it's appropriate to mention him here because I am in Switzerland. 
His name was Oswald Eaton. He was in, in, he was arrested and 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 uh, held in a Indonesian um, prison. Now while he was held in prison, he witnessed the the torture of West Papuans uh, in in a, in a cell beside him, and one of those Papuans ended up um, dying. Um, Oswald Eaton came to Ireland and reported before the Irish Human Rights uh, Committee. Um, and you can find those reports online. And that's 20 years ago. That's 2000 and uh, in the year 2000. Um, so I was looking at the, the reports from last year, a uh, very good report, uh, 2017, and also the current report, 2000 and, uh, 2018. And again, there's, uh, there's a chapter on, um, on, on, journal on journalists and access for journalists. Uh, in the current report, it starts on page 31. And again, there's uh, very clear document, documented evidence of journalists being um, refused access, lots of demo, uh, bureaucratic um, 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 blockages. And when they reach the country, they are being monitored and they're being restricted in their access. And um, there's no, re uh, it, it is in everybody's interest that we have a, a free flow of information because then we can um, act uh, according to the facts and according to transparency. The second thing is um, um, that's depressingly uh, familiar is the is the um, intimidation and the very difficult working conditions of human rights defenders. Um, we have um, Theo um, Hess again with us t today, which is a great honour. Um, he um, there's do documented uh, cases in last year's in, in the last report from 2017 of Theo and others um, with their difficulties um, doing doing their work as human rights defenders and also in the current report. Um, the, 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 those um, th those uh, cases are, are start on page uh, 53. Um, I think Peter mentioned the question of impunity, um, and also Buddy earlier. There's been a few cases being prosecuted, which is which is very welcome. But there's um, many many cases um, down the years that um, the military or the police have been implicated, and they've um, there's been no prosecutions. And I think when the military and police are acting with impunity, it, it creates a climate of fear and a climate of uh, a lack of confidence. The third point I would like to to uh, emphasize is the question of the rainforest. As uh, Peter said earlier, the rainforest in, in, in New Guinea in general is the, is the third largest uh, rainforest in, in the world. And um, it is one of our lungs. And I think Indonesia um, and the local people in Papua um, have, a, have a responsibility um, to preserve this rainforest for all of us, not just for Indonesia, not just for Papua, but for the world. And uh, um, we have a much greater awareness now because of climate change and our biodiversity loss. And we have a huge bio biodiversity resource in, in, in Papua. And uh, Indonesia and Papua can be very proud of this, but it needs to be preserved. And it's very depressing to see that um, uh, in, in, in the 2017 report, there's a very good detailed um, uh, map of concessions that have been given for palm oil um, production. And um, according to that, um, uh, that data, two million uh, he uh, hectares have been uh, given in concessions uh, to companies to, to, um, for palm oil concessions. Now, two million hectares is a huge amount of territory. If you, 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 may, you may correct me, but I think two million hectares is half the size of Switzerland. I think Switzerland is four million hectares. So it's an absolutely huge area. That, so to cut down the rainforest and to lose the biodiversity we're, 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 we're creating carbon emissions, we're losing bio, uh, biodiversity. There are opportunities um, for Papua, for um, ecotourism and for many other things, rather than cutting down the rainforest. Once the rainforest is cut down, it's gone forever. Um, finally, um, um, as, uh, Peter, as Peter has said, already said, um, we need to resolve these questions together. Indonesia, international community, and Papua. Um, we are attempting here to shine some light, as Peter said, and uh, in an attempt to, to resolve together. Um, I'd like to mention in this context um, Father Nellis Tebe, who, who was working very assiduously over the last 10 years and more for dialogue and peace in Papua. 
and he was um, an advisor to the pres- Indonesian president in the latter years. Unfortunately, he died last year. Uh, Nellis was a friend of mine. I was very sad to hear about his death and his passing. Um, we need a comprehensive dialogue between the uh, civil and political leaders in Papua and the Indonesian government, not just an, uh, an ad hoc dialogue, and it needs to be internationally mediated. Now, we have some experience of that in Ireland because we had an international dialogue between um, uh, representatives of Ireland, representatives of Britain, um, partly mediated by the United States. And I think um, opening up access and um, shining some light and also working towards this dialogue um, will help to um, bring this embarrassment into uh, away from Indonesia. And I think that's what we're all trying to work for and also trying to work for the, for the, for the Papuan people. Um, um, and I would just like to congratulate the people, the 40 organisations who put the, the two reports together, this one and, 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 and the current one. I think it's an excellent re- report and it's uh, very detailed and um, I'd like to congratulate them on it. Thank you. As a concluding remark, I think uh, we would like to express once again thank you for the Indonesian uh, uh, delegation to be here. And we are now in the process of translating this publication into Bahasa Indonesia because that is quite important for us that the people in Indonesia mm-hmm. also understand what's going on in Papua. And uh, normally when we publish uh, in the Indonesian uh, version, we also send the publications to the authorities, uh, to the House of Representatives, to the academics and those who are interested on the issue of the human rights situation in Papua, not only on civil and political rights, but on the economic, social and cultural rights. So we will have it published before June so that it can be also known widely in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you, Budi. Uh, Thank you, Mark. (coughs) Now, uh, to conclude this uh, meeting, you have received through the invitation uh, the press release of this conference. Uh, the embargo is 12 o'clock, so it's perfect. Use it. Uh, to inform you that the press release has been also issued at the same time just now in Germany, um, on, uh, in German, and that it is also available in Bahasa. And we have also the summary, the executive summary of the report. Now, uh, before leaving, uh, those who are interested to get a copy, uh, journalists first, but uh, I think that you still have some, some copies. Uh, so, And uh, we are grateful for the Swiss Press Club. We invite you to have a short, uh, a small uh, lunch uh, with us and uh, to continue the discussion if you so wish. Thank you very much. We are going to be very active in the Human Rights Council, the 43rd session, which starts over two weeks. We have announced the four Geneva-based members' organizations who are uh, in Geneva who will be available during the council presence and so on. Uh, Maybe I repeat their names, is the World Council of Churches, is Vivat International, Franciscans International, and Geneva uh, for Human Rights. And we are available for NGOs uh, to provide information. We are available for the mission to have a genuine, genuine uh, uh, dialogue on the basis of reliable information and a We are really open, and thank you to all, and in particular to Mr. Ritchie and his team. Thank you.